So what are the laws of the universe that mankind can aspire to harmonize with? And for consciousness, you can boil it down to three basic laws. Cause and effect, constant change, and duality. So the game is cause and effect. The context that the game takes place in is constant change, and the settings of the game are duality. Cause and effect. Cause and effect is the object of the game. It's what makes the game a game. Without cause and effect, there would be nothing to create this illusion of self. If you no longer make any causes, you will have no more effects. You will no longer be constant change. You will be a non-duality. And this is just a state of being aware of the entire process. So as long as there's causes, there's going to be effects within the context of constant change. And those effects will play out in a dualistic nature. A cause must have an effect. The only way for there to be no effect is if there's no cause. So for as long as you stay in the role of cause maker, then your conscious experience is going to be made up primarily of effects. It's easy to get transfixed with effects. They are addicting, mesmerizing, completely distracting, and they all lead to the desire to make more causes. So it's easy to just get lost forever in non-stop cause and effect. Enlightenment can be said to be an awareness of this process, not being caught up in the process. That the preferable mode of consciousness is to be aware of the process of cause and effect, not to be participating in cause and effect. Until one is truly aware of this process, they are still a participator. Because if one was truly aware of this process, and understood this process, they would no longer want to be involved in the process without the outside awareness of it. In fact, there can be no outside awareness of the process if one is involved in the process. The only way to appreciate something from an outside perspective is to actually have that perspective. The bird's eye view always understands and sees more. So now let's talk a little bit about constant change. One of the things that becomes clear from the outside perspective is that the way things change is through the changing of context. A thing could not exist without a context. So therefore, if a thing exists, it cannot change independent of a context. Anything in life that you could conceive of as a problem will never be solved by directly wrestling with it and trying to force it to change. To master a problem, you simply change the context. And then that hardened problem that would not budge suddenly has nothing to sustain it. It must change. So even within ordinary, common, everyday problems that all of us face every day, the way to master them is not found within the way you do things but in mastering your approach to the way you do things and all the meaning that you assign and then realizing that all the meaning that you have assigned is not worth clinging to. There's nothing to cling to anyway. Are you ready to let it all go? You've heard this before. You've thought this before. Consciously or subconsciously, you are aware of this, because we die. But mostly, we try to ignore our awareness of death, until in old age, we cannot ignore it any longer. As you begin to break down, it becomes more evidently clear that your idea of a you is coming to an end. So an awareness of death tells you that anything that we're holding on to, we're going to have to let go of. 
It's not even an option. You know the end is coming. So anything you thought was yours will not be yours anymore. All the things that you've associated this idea of a self on will be gone. So it's just something that you're temporarily attached to. And what makes it easier to let it all go is to realize that you never really had anything to let go of to begin with. It was never yours. It was just lent to you. A graphic detail requires an expenditure of energy. An expenditure of energy can be represented as when the mass whole of energy creates independent, limited portions of energy. An independent portion of energy employs and runs until it runs out of energy, until it expires, until it is no longer an energetic unit. You can metaphorically compare it to a candle or a battery. Everything has its time, but then it all burns out. But within that, nothing really ever truly comes to an end. Another reason why it should be even easier to let it all go. Not only is there nothing to hold on to to begin with, anything that you let go of, you do not lose anyway. So it's not really death per se. It is really only change. All the things that made up the essence of you, the consciousness, the biological matter, all get re-employed into something else when this idea of a you expires. It is just formless form taking on form that cannot truly be called form because of the constant changing. A substance can take a shape but when a substance changes shape, then no shape can be called its true shape. It has no shape, even though it changes shape. The only shape that can be called its true shape is shapelessness. And shapelessness is not a shape. A shape cannot be a shape without shapeless substance. No shape takes on a shape and stays a shape. Just as a body of water has no true shape, vibrations in the shapeless substance is what creates shapes. Manifestations of formlessness is what creates form. Just as when rock hits water, it creates splashes, waves, and ripples, causes and effects. In the entire context that cause and effect takes place in, is constant change. One of the ways to gain control, to try to break out of the non-stop ride of cause and effect, is to make all of your causes and all of your responses to dualistic effect to be non-dualistic. To always choose the middle path. Non-dualistic causes are a pathway out of cause and effect and duality. Non-dualistic causes can either be no cause or a neutral cause. When one addresses one's own causes, one can start to bring about harmony. And this is what can be understood as a balance of duality. And I know some of you have a problem with duality. It's mostly complaints about the extreme opposites and how it doesn't take an extreme opposite to understand a moderate opposite of that extreme. And this is true, that you do not need an extreme to understand a moderate opposite of that extreme. There is no law of duality that dictates that one must have cancer to enjoy an afternoon walk in the park. But this has never been an issue, only a point of contention of people who recognize the severe disharmony of extremes and don't like it. But the only way to get unbalanced is to balance. The only way to get out of disharmony is to harmonize. So the only way out of duality is to recognize the whole of duality. If you are chasing or running from this or that, 
then you have not yet truly grasped the whole of duality. For as long as you have preferences, discriminations, prejudices, opinions, judgments, beliefs, morals, values, cultures, for as long as you are engaging in these items, you are caught up in duality. And if the extremes of duality turn you off, then you should really be heading the other direction, away from duality. Because indulging in duality is what creates extremes. Recognizing that there's hot and cold is fine. But once you start to poke around in hot and cold is when you're subject to either get frozen or burned. So recognize duality. Do not engage duality.